Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday evening Bible study at Bridgeway Baptist Church. And once again, I am thrilled that you are here with me and that we have the opportunity to open the pages of God's Word and to study His Word. And so, uh, before we get into the lesson this evening, let's go ahead and bow our heads and we'll pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you tonight, we thank you, Lord, once again for your Word. We thank you, Lord, for how it can refresh us how it can uh, speak to us in a way that is comforting, but Lord, how it can also correct us and help us to change those things that we need to in our lives according to what you have commanded us. And so Lord, I pray that this lesson tonight, even though we may look at a number of things that uh, are uh, negative, may we also see the positive of being the righteous, wise person that you desire us to be. Lord, I pray that you would be with our pastor and his wife tonight. We thank you for them. We pray that you would be with them, that you would continue to strengthen them and guide them. Give pastor wisdom as he leads the church, especially during these trying times where there's so many uncertain things. We, we just pray that you would uh, give him wisdom and discernment. And then, Lord, we do pray for those that are in need tonight that have spiritual, physical, family needs, whatever those needs may be, Lord, we just pray that your will would be done and that you would help us to keep our eyes on you for the answer to all of those problems that we face. Now, Lord, we thank you again for your word, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we come tonight, let's go back just for a moment. Of course, we began this lesson last week. It's the treasures of wickedness or righteous deliverance. And, and this last week, we looked at, in part A of this lesson, we looked at the themes and phrases inside of Proverbs chapter 10, and we saw the wise son versus the foolish son. We saw the righteous versus the wicked, and we saw the speech versus, uh, wise speech versus wicked and foolish speech. And those were the themes inside of chapter number 10. But then we also saw the phrases that were repeated in chapter number 10. And those two phrases were, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked and but a prating fool shall fall. And that's where we ended this last week was with that phrase, but a prating fool shall fall. And we saw that in the first verse there in verse number eight, that prating fool was talking about the attitudes of the person. But then in the second verse, in verse number 10, it was talking about the actions of the person. Well, now, as I told you before last week, we're going to come into the remaining portion of the lesson. It actually covers the entire chapter because, as we saw to begin with, that uh, the overwhelming context of this chapter is the wise versus the foolish son. And so in this part, this portion of the, uh, the lesson, this part two, we're going to look at uh, the but passages in this chapter. Because you'll notice as we go through this that so many times, 25 times in 32 verses, there is the word but connecting to opposing sides of the verse. So let's let's look at a couple of those just so we can we can understand it. But in fact, the first verse of the chapter shows us that. In verse number 1 it says, "The proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother." Let's look at another one. In verse number 4 it says, "He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. And so there's a number of these but statements throughout this chapter, and that's really what we're going to look at this evening. And there are many of them, so I'm going to try to move along through them fairly quickly, not super quick, so that we can kind of process what we're looking at, but we're going to try to look at the verse and then what it says about the wicked and the wise, or the just versus the wicked. So let's look, starting in verse number one, we just saw that. In verse number one, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. So if you look in your notes there, you see it says the verse, the verse number, and then next to it, we have a column for the wise, and then the column for the foolish. And so in verse number one, the wise son, or the just son, brings joy, but the foolish son 
or the foolish person brings depression or grief. Literally, that word heaviness right there refers to depression and sorrow. And so that's in verse number one. In verse number two, look what it says. It says, treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. And so in verse number two, the righteous or the wise escapes death. It delivereth from death. And then, but the wicked or the foolish has worthless treasures. And so what is that talking about? Well, it's talking about this life. The righteous or the wise is going to escape death, not physical death, but it's that spiritual death that comes, that eternal separation from God. However, the wicked or the foolish, their treasures on this earth are worthless. Why? Because they're temporal. They're not eternal. Then in verse number three, what does it say? It says, the Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. And so in verse number three, the wise or the just man thrives in God's blessing. However, the wicked is rejected by God. And you know, if you think about that, we can go all the way back to Genesis and see the difference between Cain and Abel and their sacrifices before God. It says that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and God rejected him. But Abel brought of the firstlings of the flock, and God accepted him. And then, of course, we understand the rest of that story, and it shows us who the just and the unjust person was. And then in verse number four, it says this, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. So in verse number four, the wise or the just person, that person is diligent. However, on the flip side, the wicked or the foolish is deceitful. And then in verse number five, we have, he that gathereth in summer is a wise son, uh, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. And so in verse number five, that wise person, they're industrious. Even during the summertime, when it's not time for the harvest, they're still out there, they're busy. However, the, uh, the, the uh, foolish man is the opposite of that, which is lazy. Then at verse number six, we see blessings are upon the head of the just. And then that phrase that is repeated, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. And so in verse number six, the just or the wise are known for blessing. However, the wicked or the foolish they are filled with cruelty. And of course, we, we looked at that this last week when we were looking at that phrase, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. And then in verse number seven, we see this, the memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. And so in verse number seven, the wise or the just, they have a lasting testimony. Look what it says right there, the memory, even once they're gone, they're remembered for their testimony, but that unjust person or the, the, uh, the, the foolish person, they have lasting shame. <laughs> Not only that, but we see in verse number eight, uh, it says, the wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. So that's the first time of the second repeated phrase. And so verse number eight, we see that the wise or the just person they're humble. They'll receive commandments. Even though they're wise and just, they realize that sometimes they need to have some reproof or some uh, commandments given to them. And so they're humble before that. However, as we saw this prating fool, this person is vain and obstinate. They're not, they're, they, they only look at themselves and they are not willing to change at all. And then in verse number nine, it says, he that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. And so in verse number nine, that first, the wise or the just person, they are trusted by others. Look at that. He walketh surely. It's talking about his testimony around him and how people look at him. They know that there's no worries. Why? Because he's just. However, the unjust or the foolish person, they're not trustworthy at all. Nobody trusts them. Look at what it says there. But he that preferreth his ways shall be known. So they're both known for something. 
but one is known for being trusted and the other one is not trustworthy. Then let's look down at verse number 10. And in verse number 10, it says this. It says, He that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. Now, this, this verse is interesting because in this particular verse, there's not a difference between the righteous and the just. It's got a sentence about a wicked man. Because if you remember earlier in Proverbs, it says, He that winketh with his eye, that's what the wicked man does, causes sorrow but a prating fool shall fall. And so, again, this person, now we're talking about the action of this prating fool and the wise and just, there's nothing there, and you'll notice that's blank in, in your notes. However, the wicked or the foolish, they're vain and they're conniving. They're always trying to figure out a way to do whatever it is that they want to get done. And then in verse number 11, we see the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. And then once again, we see, but the violence, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. And so in verse number 11, the wise or the just, they have refreshing speech. When they speak, people love it. They listen, they drink it in like a well of life, the Bible says. However, violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. That wicked person, they can't be spoken to at all. No one even wants to listen to what they're saying. And not only do they not want to listen, they can't even talk to them because they are just unwilling to listen or speak things that are kind. Not only that, in verse number 12, we see hatred stirreth up strite, strifes, but love covereth all sins. And so in verse number 12, the wise are the just, they're kind and understanding, but not the wicked. They like to stir the pot. Look at what that says. Hatred stirreth up strifes. Yes, they're willing to look at something and, ooh, ooh, there's something there. Let's just stir that a little bit and, and see what we can get out of it. However, the righteous or the just, they are kind. They're understanding. When something happens, when someone sins against them, they realize, you know what? We are all fallen human beings. I forgive you. And that's what the righteous and the just person is. They're kind and understanding. And then in verse number 13, it says this, In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Now, this is a very serious verse here because now we're not just talking about speaking to someone and trying to correct them. Now we're talking about actual punishment. And so in verse number 13, we see that the wise or the just they speak wise words. They say things that are going to be helpful. But the foolish or the wicked, this person needs serious correction. They've gone so far that they are needing the rod, the Bible says. And so uh, in verse number 14, we see the wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. And so the wise person, they're constantly learning. They're constantly growing as a person, seeing themselves for who God sees them as they are and realizing that they're not perfect and that they need to continue to strive to be more like the Lord. And so they're learning, they're gaining knowledge. However, on the flip side in verse number 14, it says, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. They never learn. Look at verse number 15. It says this, um, actually, hang on just a second, because I've got something here in my notes that I want to make sure that I that I cover, uh, and I don't see it. So um, they never learn. Oh, that's what it is. Part of this particular word here that we're looking at, the word destruction, it literally is talking about fire and how when fire gets in there, it can be destructive. And so that's what this foolish person is when they are doing what it is they're doing. It is just like a fire that consumes everything. But the destruction of the poor, excuse me, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. When they open their mouth, it's like a fire that goes out to consume everything around it. And then in verse number 17, the wise or the uh, um, uh, wise or the just person, let's look at that. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. But he that refuseth reproof erreth. And so 
that person that is just and wise. They learn from their mistakes. Look what it says there. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. Remember that word instruction talks about the attitude that we have when someone comes to us to correct us. And so this one learns from their mistakes. However, it says, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. The foolish and the wicked person, they refuse correction. Why, why are you even speaking to me? I don't, I don't need to be, I've done nothing wrong. And that's how they see themselves. They see themselves in some weird, twisted way. They see themselves as almost being perfect instead of being the one that needs to be corrected. And then in verse number 19, it says, In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. And can I tell you something? When I read this verse, it was the one that struck me the hardest because I'll tell you, I love to talk. And you know what? When, when we love to talk, I don't believe there's anything wrong with that. But if you look at what it says right here, in the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. But then look at the second part of that. It says, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. And so the wise person, they don't have to speak. Sometimes they can just listen and, and, and be a part of the conversation without having to necessarily interject into it. However, in verse number 19, and it goes along with verse number 18. Let's look at back at verse number 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. And so this is a person that is being completely ugly with what they're saying. And, and not only are they, they being ugly, but they're lying. They're saying things about people that aren't even true, and they're uttering slander, so they're saying things against people that could be harmful, so they're being foolish. And so I brought that into verse number 19, because look at what it says here. But he that refrain, excuse me, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. What if that person who decides that they're going to say all those ugly, harmful, hateful things and those lies about somebody else, what if they decide just to say, I'm not going to do that anymore? Now, all of a sudden, they're seeing the error in their ways and they're desiring to be wise. But if they don't, they're that person that has a multitude of words. Listen to what I'm saying about all these people. Don't you know what they're doing? And so in verse number 19, uh, in verse number 19, we have the wise person doesn't have to speak. However, the wicked or foolish person, they don't care what they say. They're uncaring in their speech. Whatever I say, you just need to listen to me because I need to be heard. Even if it's a lie, even if it hurts other people, doesn't matter. Just listen to what I am saying because I'm the more, most important person in the room. And so the Bible says that that is foolish. And then in verse number 21, it says this. It says, The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. And so in verse number 21, uh, the righteous are worth listening to. However, the unrighteous, the unjust, the foolish they have worthless information. What they're saying is not going to help anyone. And then look further along in verse number 22, and it says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. So look at that. The righteous feed many. Why? Because we saw earlier in the chapter, they're blessed of the Lord. Whereas the wicked, they're refused by God. The righteous are blessed. And so the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. Why? Because that person that is righteous and just, they're accepted of the Lord because they're doing what God wants them to do. They're obeying the Lord. They have a humble spirit before God. They fear the Lord. That's the thing that we have to remember. Every time we talk about this just, wise person, remember this is a person that fears God. They're living in humility before God and saying, Lord, whatever it is that you have for me, I am not only going to listen, I am going to do and change so I can be who you want me to be. And that's, that's so opposing to what we see today, isn't it? 
And we said this before today, the, 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 the statement that's going around that we hear everywhere is, well, you just need to do you. You do you. Well, no, that's not Bible. The Bible says that you and I should do God. We should be more like the Lord and do what God wants us to do. And so, uh, again, in verse number 21, the wise are worth listening to. However, the foolish have worthless information. And then look at verse number 23. It says, it is as sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. And so in verse number 23, um, we have always helping the righteous or the wise person. They're always helping. However, the wicked and the foolish, they're always plotting. Let's look at that again. It is sport to a fool to do mischief. This is a person that to do something that's wrong that could be harmful to other people, they just see it as, hey, man, that's a great time. Let's go and do whatever we can. And of course, if we think about it, we could take that back again to chapter number one of Proverbs where it says, look, son, here's what they're going to go do. They're looking for every opportunity to get at somebody, even though they don't realize the end of what they're doing is harmful to themselves. They're hurting themselves. And then it also says, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. That person that wants to have that intimate relationship with God, they're wise. And so they're always helping. They're always ready to give a hand. They're always speaking things that will be helpful and, and trying to bless others. But that fool and that wicked person, they're always looking for a way that they can do something that might help them, even if it hurts someone else. And then in verse number 24, and we're getting closer to the end of the chapter here, I hope that, that uh, you're able to follow along and I'm not going too fast, but in verse number 24, let's see what it says. It says, the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. And so the right, righteous or the wise and the just, they receive blessing, but the foolish and wicked person they suffer consequences. In verse number 25, we see this. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. And so there we see this, that the righteous and the wise, they have a lasting legacy. Even once they're gone, the things that they've done, the words that they've said, they stay behind and people remember them. They have a lasting legacy. However, the unjust and the foolish, they're here and then they're gone. And the truth of it is, no one even remembers who they were or why they were here. Let's look also at verse number 26. It says, As vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. Think about this. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. Why? Because this person, when, when people ask them to do something, like it says here, vinegar to the teeth. Have you ever drank vinegar before? And when you have it in your mouth, it makes your teeth do this, this weird gritting together. It's like a squeaky feeling. It, it just feels weird in your mouth. But then it says, as smoke to the eyes. Have you gotten smoke in your eyes before? And they start watering and they puff up and it's very irritating. So is the sluggard to him that sent him. And so the sluggard, this wicked person, this foolish person, why does no one want to remember them? Because, man, they were a trial when they were here, they never tried to, to be agreeable or, or help. They were just always trying to do whatever it is that they wanted to do. And so let's look at the next one here. In verse number 27, what does it say? It says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. And so in, in that verse we see in verse 27, the righteous or the wise, they have a long Life. And of course, we've seen that numerous times in previous chapters of Proverbs that the Bible says that it will add long life to you, but the wicked 
or the unjust. Their life is cut short. And, and here's what I want to explain about this particular verse. You say, but hold on a second, Bill. I knew this person who just seemed like they were the most righteous and wise person, and then they were they were uh, uh, killed, or or maybe they died of of of, uh, of a terrible disease when they were younger in life. They didn't live to be that age that the Bible says of of seventy or eighty. They they died maybe in their forties or their fifties or sixties. You say, well, hold on. They didn't have a long life, but hold on. They have eternal life. If they knew the Lord, that wise, righteous person, which obviously we understand that the only way you can be truly wise and righteous is if you do know the Lord as your Savior and you are a Christian. So that person, their life is extended. However, you may also say, well, I knew this person that was just ugly and terrible and they lived into their 80s. Yes, they may have, but that was temporal life. They will have to suffer their consequences consequences for the rest of eternity. And so they are cut short. Because what is God's will for all of us? God wants all of us. The Bible says that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why? Because God wants us to be with him in heaven. He doesn't want us to be separated from him. He wants us, wants us to be there with him in heaven. And then in verse number 28, it says this, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. And so in, in verse number 28, the righteous are grateful. Man, whatever I get, thank you, Lord, for your blessing. However, the wicked and the unjust and the foolish they're never satisfied. There's never enough. Well, okay, I know you, you did this for me, but why didn't you do that? It's so opposite to how God wants us to be. Just grateful for the blessings that God gives us, no matter what they are. You may look at your brother and say, well, he looks like he's blessed more than me. Well, hold on a second. He's blessed maybe temporally, but what about the lasting blessings that God really has for us? And those are the things that we need to keep our eyes on. What does the Bible say in Hebrews? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. How could the cross be joy? Because Jesus recognized that because of his sacrifice, you and I would have eternal life and be able to be with him forever, not separated from our creator, who desires to fellowship with us. And then let's look at verse number 29. It says this, The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. And so verse number 29, we see that the wise and just, they're strengthened by God. However, the wicked and the foolish, they have everlasting destruction. And then in verse number 30, what does it say? It says, the righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. And again, that's speaking about eternity there. And so in verse number 30, it means that there is an everlasting heritage of the righteous. When they die, their children are left with something that they can pass on to their children and then to their children. However, the wicked and the unjust and the foolish they're literally going to be removed from the earth. And again, that has eternal consequences, not necessarily here on this earth now, but in eternity. And then in verse number 31, it says, The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. And so in verse number 31, the wise and the just person, they give wisdom to others. They, they want to be a help to other people. And, it's, and, and you have to understand this again. Remember, they're humble. They fear the Lord. It's not that, well, you need to listen to me. I, don't you realize that I'm a wise person? So you need to take these words. No. They humbly try to help those that are around them. Whether it's through words that they say or the deeds that they do, these people, they give wisdom to others. And then, though, the unjust or the foolish, they don't have anything to give. Look at what it says there. But the froward tongue shall be cut out. It's totally removed. They have nothing to offer. Why? Because they don't speak anything that is helpful. 
And then the last verse, verse number 32, we see the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. And so this wise, just person, the final thing that, that, that we see in this chapter about them is they're discerning. And isn't that so important when we think about being wise and, and speaking things that are helpful and doing things that are helpful? We have to be discerning. We have to understand. And, and, and the way that we do that really is, again, by keeping our eyes on the Lord, being in constant contact with the Lord, speaking to him and saying, Lord, help me to be discerning because true discernment only comes from him. But that wise person, they're discerning, however the wicked or the foolish person. Look what it says here. It says, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. And if you remember, again, this is another word that we've looked at before. The word froward literally is talking about someone that is going against God. They know who God is, but they've turned their back. And so they're speaking against him. And so even though the wise is discerning, the foolish and the wicked, they speak against God. Wow, folks, what a list that we have seen in this chapter. And, and, and so, okay, this is wonderful, but, but what does this mean? How does this apply to me individually? You know, first of all, we must realize that we are sinners. And anything that is said of a foolish or wicked person can apply to you and I. We may be born-again believers, but we are still sinners and must be on guard for all of these things in our life. But here's the good news. We can overcome and be that wise, just person that God wants us to be. Let's look at what God's Word says, and you'll notice here in, in your notes I've included some verses. In Romans 6, verses 6 through 7, it says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. We don't have to be wicked. We don't have to be unjust. Why? Because of Jesus Christ, the Bible says here that not only are we, uh, we shouldn't serve sin, but it says, hey, you're dead. You're dead to this world. So recognize that because a dead man can't serve sin. Because why? We're alive unto the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be dead to the things of this world. And God wants to have that victory through us. Also, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 through 6, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit." For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. We saw that here in Proverbs chapter 32, or Proverbs chapter 10. And, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so even right here, the Apostle Paul in the book of, of, of Romans shows us the difference between the wicked or the foolish person and the just. He basically repeats what we just heard here. Look what that says. For to be carnally minded is death. That means to be thinking about the things of this world, only concerned with the things of this world, but to be spiritually minded, to be wise is life and peace. And then in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. And then finally in Romans 8, 37, it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him 
that loved us. Folks, you and I, even though when we leave, read through this list and we see those things that God is comparing the, the wise to the foolish and the, and the just to the unjust, and we may see ourselves in some of those things, we can rest in this, that if we know Jesus Christ as Savior, we don't have to serve that part of life any longer. We can be wise. We can be just. And it's at our disposal. God has, has given it to us. Now all we have to do is receive it. Not receiving Jesus Christ. That's not what we're talking about here. We're, we're assuming through all of this that you know the Lord is your Savior, but yet you're still uh, doing some of the things that the flesh might desire you to do. And through these verses we've just seen, we understand that because we are saved, because we know Christ, those shackles have been taken off of us. We don't have to live under the weight of sin. But we have to give our all to the Lord every moment of every day. And the Bible says we can because it says right here, we are more than conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again, not only for this book of Proverbs, Lord, but for the assurances that we have throughout your word that when we follow you, when we know you and we desire to follow you, Lord, that we are not only blessed but we are most blessed because we are doing what it is that you want us to do. And so I pray for each and every one of us, Lord, that you would help us as we saw that last one to be discerning and to uh, keep our eyes on you so that moment by moment, as, as things come across us, as temptations come, as things from the old life appear in our speech or in, in what we do, Lord, that we will be discerning enough to say, oh, I don't need to do that. And that we'll ask you for forgiveness and that we will, as this wise person, will see the error in our ways and that we'll change for you because we are more than conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to see that every day in our lives. And Lord, as we go from this place tonight, we just pray that you would bless us. Give us wisdom. And Lord, help us to obey those things that you've shown us through your word in this lesson, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you again for being here with me tonight. Looking forward to our next lesson, but I'm also looking forward to see you on this Sunday. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.